this year, you know, we've seen <laughs> insane market growth, right? We've gone from about a million dollars in volume to billions of dollars in volume. And so um, it's really, you know, just fun to see it to get to the next level. But also, you know, I think important reminder is that it is really day zero for the space. And despite this, you know, crazy, insane um, market movement over the last uh, year, it's, it's, we've got a long way to go for sure. Here today with Devin Fenzer, CEO of OpenSea. How are you today? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Uh, we're going to jump right into things with one of the latest headlines. Uh, there was an employee that was flipping NFTs and listing them on the yeah. front page of OpenSea. Uh, how? What? What are your thoughts on kind of like what happened there? What transpired? And then how can we kind of prevent those things from happening moving forward? Yeah. Not only on your yeah. platform, but other NFT yeah. marketplaces. Yeah. Well, I think the thing to remember is it's a it's a brand new space. People are trying to figure out exactly what's happening with NFTs, and I think we have an opportunity at OpenSea to really set policies and standards around sort of how do employees use confidential information. Um, and you know, in this case, we we have an opportunity to really strengthen those policies. Um, so ensuring that you know we provide a level playing field for all users of the platform. So um, you know, it's an opportunity for like such an uncharted territory. We're kind of we're the largest marketplace, and so we view this as really uh, you know an opportunity to sort of start setting you know more rigorous policies around that, so that employees at OpenSea can engage in the NFT ecosystem, but in a way that's you know builds really strong trust with our community. And for us, trust is really central to the marketplace, right? Um, and so. You know, this we viewed that as viewed this as an opportunity to, to do that. Um, now NFTs on OpenSea are organized yeah. into nine different categories. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the most popular, and then yeah. what are some of like the fastest growing categories that yeah, you're seeing? Yeah, sure. yeah, I mean, I think the biggest one right now is sort of this profile picture phenomenon, right? These collectibles, basically, right. where people you know are interested in sort of developing a tribe around a certain type of thing, and you know, there's artwork associated with it. So it's sort of a, a weird mix of a lot of different things. Um, but you know the categories that are up and coming are you know things like game items, virtual worlds, projects like Decentraland and CryptoVoxels, where you can own virtual real estate and build uh, structures and museums inside of it. So we're really excited about kind of the diversity of NFTs expanding over time, and these collectible projects are you know blowing up and getting a lot of people excited and a lot of developers interested. Um, but long term, you know, we think there's going to be more and more interesting utility around NFTs, both in like the virtual metaverse world, but also in the real world, right? So event tickets as NFTs or you know, physical items that have NFT representations of them, those sorts of things are really cool too. And like, what are some of like the disruption powers that you're seeing with like NFTs kind of transitioning from like a traditional uh, sense in like the music industry or art industry? What's that disruption power of NFTs from, from where you sit at OpenSea? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's you know, it's, Disruptive, but also really symbiotic with the existing art community, right? So Christie's and Sotheby's have been embracing NFTs, right? right? They've done several high-profile auctions. So I think, you know, we don't see this as kind of like, you know, getting rid of older industries. We see it as complementing them, right? And even if you think about sort of the existing web infrastructure, Twitter and Instagram have been these amazing vehicles for NFTs to really spread virally. So I think like, you know, Disruptive for sure, like, you know, people are going to build, I think the, the products that are most successful are going to be the ones that come kind of from the grassroots as opposed to from the top down. Um, but I think, you know, ultimately every single brand and every single platform is going to get really excited about this. Um, and we're already seeing that in, in the art world. Um, and gaming is another one that's interesting to look at. We haven't seen huge game developers come into the space yet. We've seen a little bit, but mostly it's been kind of grassroots efforts and I think you know I think we'll see both over the next while we'll see the grassroots efforts Axie Infinity really like grow and then we'll see traditional game developers um, and bigger companies start to you know dip their foot and so like what does that look like especially in the gaming industry yeah. uh, the power of an NFT inside of that ecosystem uh -huh. what does that look like I think what's really exciting about with, with gaming I don't know if you're familiar with the loot project but basically there's this idea that you could have a game item that transcends any single game 
and with loot, it's just it's literally just a game item that you that is the idea is you build different games around it, and it can mean different things in different contexts, right? So you can imagine just having a sword, and you know you go play that sword, you go use that sword in Fortnite. Because you don't right. really use swords in Fortnite, <laughs> yeah. but like you know, then you take it to World of Warcraft. You take it, right. maybe these are new crypto games, but you can kind of like take these things around with you and own them in this like sort of generic way that works on all sorts of different applications. Um, and then, you know, the other thing about games is like, typically they're sort of closed, centrally controlled economies. And this is a way to have a free market economy for a game, right? So if you look at a project like Decentraland, which is a virtual world with virtual real estate, it's an entirely free market economy, right? And uh, that's that's a pretty new phenomenon. Uh, some game developers in the past have tried to create marketplaces, um, but typically it's you know it's hard to run a successful marketplace. And crypto really does bring this like sort of free market dynamics from the beginning without the developer having to kind of implement everything themselves. That's powerful stuff. Hell yeah, I, I, I'm super excited about that because I'm a gamer swearing. myself, right? <laughs> Uh, good stuff. Now, uh, which which use cases of NFTs are you most excited about? I think gaming. gaming. Yeah, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, and I, I just think it's like it's so metaversey, and yeah. you know, I think the cool thing about gaming is it's not just like it's not just taking existing games and applying NFTs to it. It's really thinking about like what are the brand new things that we couldn't even maybe imagine before this existed. Um, and I think that's happening with projects like Loot, you know, just where it's like super weird. And you know, who knows whether that particular one will take off, but like to see the sort of iteration cycles really happening is is a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I mean, it seems like like NFTs are going to impact like almost every single industry. For sure. And yeah. it's gonna be very, very interesting to see yeah. like how that shakes out in the yeah. next year or two yeah. once kind of people get this this knowledge base of what yeah. the power of an NFT actually is. Yeah. Um, so what, are, what kind of insights can you offer in regards to the evolution of the NFT market over the last year, kind of like what you've seen? Yeah, well, I mean, this year has just been really exciting for the NFT market, right? But, you know, people started building NFTs 2017, way back in the day, and just started kind of tinkering, building a standard around it. CryptoKitties obviously kind of made a splash and like got you know some builders excited about this and sort of momentum built up from there. Um, but now we're sort of seeing the fruits of those labors start to come and really get the mainstream audience excited about it. And it's crazy, like it's still a really rough experience, right? You still have to kind of get a wallet, you know, get cryptocurrency. And so all these you know new users are really jumping through a lot of hoops to you know try this out, right? So um, I think uh, this year, you know, we've seen <laughs> insane market growth, right? We've gone from about a million dollars in volume to billions of dollars in volume, and so. Um, it's really, you know, just fun to see it to get to the next level. But also, you know, I think important reminder is that it is really day zero for the space. And despite this, you know, crazy, insane um, market movement over the last uh, year, it's it's we've got a long way to go for sure. Now, what's going to make that that user experience uh, yeah. and kind of reduce a lot of those barriers yeah, to entry? Yeah. What are some things that OpenSea are maybe working on? Yeah, for sure. So, well, a couple things. One is we just launched our mobile application, which allows you to, you know, explore NFTs on your phone. And we'll be layering in buying and selling to the mobile experience soon. Um, we have some integrations where you can buy crypto directly on the site through some of our partners. Um, those are still work in progress, and um, you know, a lot of different, a lot of iterations we need to make to to have that be more accessible to all users. Um, but those are a few things, and then the, the probably the biggest one is going cross chain. So. Um, right now, uh, or currently, we support Ethereum and Polygon. Polygon is a layer two on top of Ethereum with much lower transaction costs. And then also, we've sort of re-architected how the marketplace works. Um, and so, you know, that allows for an experience where users don't have to worry as much about gas costs and like all of this mental overhead. Um, and we're going to be expanding to additional blockchains in the future. So, really trying to just kind of have a better user experience around. Uh, buying and selling on the on the site is, I think, going to help a lot for sure. Now, are NFTs a, a bubble? Like, are what are you kind of <laughs> seeing here in like the next like six months before the end of the year? I guess it's so difficult to predict. Yeah, yeah I think you know, for us, we always you know we we don't look too closely at the short term because it's just you know not a not necessarily a good use of energy. But we look really closely at kind of like what's the long term trend here, right? So, for example, you know, we started OpenSea in 2017. It was a mini hype cycle, nothing like the one today. But we just sort of kept on building, and you never know when it's going to explode again. I don't think anyone would have predicted the exact timing. Um, and similarly, who knows whether it like has 
more room to grow in the next couple of months or we see a die down. But overall, the long term trend, as we've been talking about, is just so strong. Um, so it almost doesn't really matter. And, you know, obviously, when you're running a business, you have to sort of plan for these sorts of things. But um, we're, you know, we're very well capitalized as a business and, you know, we can kind of weather whatever storm happens and, and really be around for the long haul. So no concerns about an upcoming bear market at all for, for Yeah, no concerns. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite possible for sure. But Greatly appreciate you yeah, chatting with us today. Me. Nice yeah. to meet you. Devin Finzer here, CEO of OpenSea. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah.